Hi, my name is uh, Jakob Skov. I'm the CEO of NKT Photonics. Uh, we uh, are situated or based in Denmark, uh, north of Copenhagen, and have sales offices in Germany, France, US, and China. Uh, we do uh, super continuum lasers and also photonic bind gap fibers, and we have an industrial line for now line with uh, low phase noise lasers. We service primarily three areas uh, with the fiber. It's material processing, so we sell uh, fibers and amplifiers to those who do ultra-fast lasers. We also take our own medicine and we use the lasers uh, for supercontinuum or the fibers for supercontinuum. Uh, so basically the supercontinuum is an ultra-fast laser with a nonlinear fiber on it. Uh, and finally we have an industrial line where we service the oil and gas industry uh, with very low phase noises, uh, lasers called coherers. NKT Photonics is uh, about 14 years old now. Uh, we were spun out from uh, the university and is a part of a large industrial group in Denmark uh, with around 9,000 employees. Uh, our vision was back in 1999 uh, that we wanted to make uh, 40 companies within the optics hemisphere in five years, so we call it Vision 2005. Uh, and we did nine companies within the optics sphere, uh, primarily in telecom and then in life science optics. Uh, and uh, we wanted out of those 40 to have five companies with a sizable uh, size in five, and then hopefully uh, around uh, 150, 200 million, uh, 10 years later, uh, one or two companies left. NKT is a 120 year old conglomerate, so uh, we're used to taking immature businesses and grow them to a certain size. Uh, lifestyle diseases uh, are popping up more and more, uh, so there's a huge pressure on healthcare, and uh, you need to go from uh, medication backwards to diagnostics in order to save cost for society. Uh, so we decided to see if we can come up with technologies that could sort of uh, grow into the diagnostic themes uh, of healthcare. And that uh, became then the supercontinuum. Uh, the beauty of the supercontinuum is you have all frequencies available and that means that you can detect uh, at the maximum peak of, of uh, the fluorescence of whatever you're looking at. Uh, so uh, we bet, so to speak, on uh, the growing population and aging of the population as well as uh, lifestyle diseases, basically. We have another product line, uh, which is a low phase noise uh, laser. Basically, when you drive your car, uh, your light gets distorted or dispersed over just 100 meters. Uh, our type of laser has exactly the same frequency after 70 kilometers. And that means that our customer can send out the light at a long distance and any slight change uh, of frequency can be converted into uh, either sound or even imaging. Uh, and that has uh, sort of uh, leapfrogged us into the sensing industry and from there on into the oil and gas industry. The oil and gas industry today, they lay a very large fiber arrays on bottom of an oil well. Uh, and then we have our lasers, uh, anything from 400 even up to 1,000 or 10,000 lasers sitting up uh, onshore or or at the rig, you send out uh, frequencies and you sail with a ship uh, who does a sound wave and the sediments reflect uniquely onto the fiber that gets a slight change in the frequency and that can be converted into an image again and you can then see where the oil is. Uh, you pressure with CO2 or water towards where you already have your installation and capex uh, and thereby uh, the expect to increase uh, efficiency by 1% or even up to 5%. Every percent gain is equal to $500 million EBIT of these uh, large oil wells. We believe that, that uh, supercontinuum sources or broadband sources in general will, uh, will go into non-destructive uh, testing so, and vision inspection within a three to five year time frame. So the censoring, even spectroscopy where you need high speed censoring, pill sorting, etc. is just on the verge. But there again, like in others, you need to go down on the cost curve. Uh, so uh, we, uh, we take the life science industry firstly in med techs and then uh, longer term we believe that the industry will also come in and take the advantages of OCT uh, by non-destructive testing and those kind of areas. In the first years of course it was us almost trying to find the markets, being very evangelistic. Uh, today it's the opposite, so we have uh, large OEMs coming to us and we do design cycles, anything from two to three, even four years. 
uh, with large OEMs. And then constantly every year we try to push uh, the innovation and technologies on trade shows like this to sort of show what's the next potential, the next thing. Uh, but the OEMs tend to be more conservative, of course. Uh, so uh, we do design cycles with them and they are often very long and cumbersome because it's a platform change for them as well. I think in general it's because lasers penetrate even more and more every year that goes uh, along. Uh, what I would like to see though is moving away from a cottage-like industries uh, with mums and pop shops and more standardized uh, products and standards as well. Because that's the only way we can really grow this industry to a mature business. Uh, I tend to see it still as a very young, very vibrant industry. Also you see the revenue stream of just two or three year old products are quite high in all the, the companies. And we need to get more volume, more standardized, and it's too easy for a customer to demand their customization, actually.